So in today's video, I wanna share with you what I feel is the most valuable aspect of rope flow, biomechanically speaking, of course. It also happens to be my favorite element of rope flow to practice, and yet I hardly see anyone out there doing it this way. So then Tim, will you please tell us what is the most highly valuable aspect of rope flow that you love and cherish so much? Well guys, in my honest, humble opinion, it is footwork or not just footwork, more specifically, traveling drills. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what traveling drills are for those of you that don't know. I'm gonna share why I love them so much and I'm gonna offer 10 examples of traveling drills from easy right up to difficult for you to go and try in your own practice. HTTP. So a traveling drill, or we could also call it a marching drill, simply put, is where you take any pattern of rope flow that you are somewhat competent at. You don't have to be a master at it. Traveling drills will help you master it. We'll take it to the next level. And we take it from standing on two feet and we go for a walk with it. Generally, depending on the pattern, but mostly in a straight line. Now, when we do this, we learn to sync every revolution of the rope with a step. Now, that's the general rule. Sometimes it might be two revolutions per step. It might be two steps per revolution. You can get creative with it. But initially, a traveling drill is simply learning to connect a revolution of the rope with a step of the foot. And this way we learn to synchronize the spine and the arms with the timing of our feet. Every single step becomes a perfect re repetition. We could do it without the rope, but the rope is an exaggerated version. It highlights the rhythm and timing of this movement to us so that when we want to move without the rope, when we go for a run, when we're playing sport, our whole body really learns to harmonize and sync and move as one unit. So now I've shared with you some of my passion for the traveling drills. Let's get into some examples. So number one, starting at the easiest, overhand figure of eight traveling style. Now the key to this is that the rope should land on the outside of the foot that steps forward. So as you take that step, say my left foot is stepping forward, that's where the rope will land on the outside of the left foot. In the beginning, the main mistake I see people make is that they are out of sync with this. You can do it out of sync, but the intention to get the most from this, especially biomechanically, is to work contralaterally. Simply put, that means that in the body, we have this kind of spiral line crossing over the body. And when we walk, the opposite side shoulder and hips shorten and that opposite side lengthens. So my right shoulder and my left hip come together as my right hip and my left shoulder lengthen. And then when I take it the next step, the opposite thing happens. So then the opposite side shortens and that side lengthens. When we do the overhand march like this, you can learn to sink in the easiest way. And when you do this, you can play with rolling the shoulders, get aggressive with it if you want. But all we're trying to do here is sync the timing of the spine and the rib cage with the feet. Traveling drill number two, we've got overhands upside down brother, the underhand. Now this is the one that relates the most to locomotion. So this might be the one you wanna practice the most, especially if you're a runner or you like sprinting, anything like that, this is the pattern you wanna to do to get the most from it biomechanically. If you really wanna dial this in and get so much from it, is to try to feel your center of mass where your balance point is traveling in a straight line as possible. The key here is not to bounce around your weight from side to side. We're trying to move A to B streamline, precise with our, our weight center of mass moving A to B, not ping ponging around. So as you do this, feet not quite on a tight rope, but feet kind of narrow, and then really get that spinal engine whirring, get the shoulders rolling. It's a 3D movement, remember, we're not just rotating. 3D movement, walking the feet in sync with the rhythm of the rope. Next up, we've got a lot of play and exploration to be had, introducing the drag and roll to the traveling drills. And this is something I teach, not in the beginner's class, but in the second class, after I've taught people drag and roll, they've gone away, they've practiced it a bit, they've got that dialed in. Then we move on to some drag and roll traveling drills. And people really seem to like this, especially when they're new to rope flow and they've just got the drag and roll. It helps to just deepen the understanding of the drag and roll. We want, with the drag and roll, we wanna to learn to keep the rope vertical whilst we move horizontally. And until you travel, you don't really experience that. So in the beginning, you're gonna start with an overhand drag and roll. Say I'm facing to the right and my rope is going counterclockwise. And as the rope comes behind my body, I'm gonna use the momentum as it hits the ground. I'm gonna turn 180 degrees and it's gonna stand in front of me facing the other way. Then from there, I can do the same thing again and turn back on myself. So we're not doing 360 just yet. We're doing a forward turn in the direction and another forward turn. So we're kind of going in and out as we go. 
Number four, then we've got the inversion of this. This time we're gonna go traveling in the underhand direction. So last time when we're going with the overhand, it was as it hit behind us. This time we're gonna go with the rope as it comes past my toes, Grace has passed my toes on the floor. I'm gonna let that lead the turn. So if I'm doing a drag and roll, and as it comes past my toes, that's gonna lead my back leg. If I'm going clockwise and I'm gonna to go to my left, as the rope comes past my toes, my right foot's gonna lift up and I'm gonna turn 180 degrees, give you guys my back, and then we go again, drag and roll the opposite way. Let me tell you, the highlight of my week at the moment is in the gym, on the treadmill, skipping. I absolutely love skipping and there is no place like to skip on a treadmill, just a little side bonus tip for you guys. I don't mean skipping like jump rope, I mean skipping like a gleeful cartoon character down the street like I do in the supermarket and not care what people think. This next pattern is to do with skipping. I call it a matador hop, but you could call it a matador skip as well. And I only started to do this this year as I fell in love with skipping. Now for this, you're gonna get a matador going. You can do the overhand or underhand version here. Try both, but all we're gonna do here, get a matador going on the spot. And as you do that two beats on each side, those two beats are gonna be a skip. And then as you move the weight of the rope, that's when you're gonna transfer the weight from one foot to the other foot. So it's pretty easy to do, but what you can do here is you should start slowly and build up some speed and you really start to find this beautiful weightless moment as you hop with the weight of the rope and the arm swing to lift you up and then you land with the arm ready to go again. You've reloaded and as you shift the weight and jump from one foot to the other, you come through powerfully, boom, land with a skip on that other leg. Maybe, maybe my number one favorite drill out of all of these 10. On to number six then, hopefully you got the drag and roll 180 down because now we're gonna take it for a full spin, the drag and roll 360. Now this is simply combining two of the previous ones we've done. You've got an overhand drag and roll and then an underhand negative, I think, something like that. I, don't, I haven't fully tried to think about it that way just yet, but essentially, doesn't matter what you call it, how you define it, you're gonna turn continuously in a line in the same direction. Now this is a really good one to train your dizziness or to test uh, your ability to rotate and remain balanced. Now what would be really useful here is if you've got a line on the floor for this one, because the real challenge is to do this and maintain a straight line as possible on a tightrope if you can. Now for me what this really highlights is turning in one direction, I'm very comfortable and I can remain balanced and, and enjoy this drill. When I, there's the other direction I go, I always seem to either come up short or lose balance when I hit the line. It's a little more complex, but man, we don't really spin enough in the gym. And this is a great way to get you spinning and testing your balance, your equilibrium, as you spin and trying to maintain a dead on line. Onwards to number seven then, it's the Enetra Special. We've got the duck walk. You better watch that duck duck walk. For this, you need to be able to have mastered the underhand alternating sneak, or what I like to call the sprinter sneak. And as we do this, First step is just to take small steps contralaterally, which means as my right hand comes up, my left foot steps forward and I do the sneak. And then on the opposite side, as my left hand comes through, I step with my right leg. It's really gonna wind you in and twist you into your body. Really lovely rotation here. Then as you start to master that, you start to take it down low. Get that deep squat, duck work style, as we say, that Anetra special. <laughs> Onwards then to the vertical infinity, number eight. We've got a move I named last year, the Gene Kelly. After inspired by watching his amazing work in the film Singing in the Rain, which is an unbelievable film, would recommend it to anyone. Triple threats were a real thing back then. Don't see many of them these days. But this man could move, and I just really like this. Within that, Gene Kelly does these really precise spins as he travels in a straight line, and all the kids shout, airplane. <laughs> and it just really, I thought that was really cool. And so when I was doing the Rope Flow 360s, I realized that you don't have to do an equal 180 with the 360 as you go. You can over arch the outer rotation and then keep it short on the inside. And this felt somewhat similar to what Gene Kelly was doing in the movie, Singing in the Rain. And so I coined it the Gene Kelly. Again, an incredible one for trying to keep that, you know, have a target. You know how ballet dancers, they keep their eyes focused, they turn. This is what we want to do with the Gene Kelly. Try and have that target in the horizon and try and really try to flare out. Really nice one to dial in. Getting up there now, this next one, we call the Skywalker. You can take it for a traveling drill. It's a reverse skip over the rope with a 180 turn and then a big overhand ace movement. I'm not here to teach this move directly in the video. I just wanna show you what there is to try. There's a tutorial for the Skywalker on its own on this channel, but ultimately you're gonna jump over the rope, reverse skip, big ace over the top, take a step and keep and repeat that over and over again. If you do it on one side, make sure you do it on the other side. Something Patrick Beach, 
uh, got from me through Instagram. I was really impressed. He managed to learn it just from a couple of Instagram videos. And so when we hooked up earlier this year in Manchester, we got a nice clip of us both doing it together, which I'm probably definitely sharing on the screen right now. And finally, at number 10, we've got a move I came up with a couple years ago as an evolution of the Billie Jean pattern. <laughs> in which there is a tutorial for on here and that will be a starting point if you want to do this and that is the reverse unwind i know anticlimactic name i couldn't come up with a better name for it but that's what it feels like it feels like i'm going reverse and then i'm kind of unwinding and then winding up and then stepping again again the full tutorial for it is with infinity 2 or study the footage that i'm showing right here probably the pattern here that feels the most uh physically satisfying you know when you're a kid and you swing a swing in a, in a loop and the ropes kind of intertwine and then it starts to naturally unwind and with you know it's kind of free energy at that point and that's kind of what this pattern feels like when you're wrapping up and then you take that one step backwards and you're already wound up for the next dragon roll you go again and it feels like an effortless twist and untwist as you go in that straight line as much as possible so there you have 10 traveling drills for you to work your way up through one by one hopefully now you understand why i feel it's the most valuable aspect of rope flow training that no one seems to be doing. It will make your rope flow practice 3D. It will bring it to life. No longer will you be stood on the spot. You'll be looking for an open bit of grass. You'll be asking the gym owner if you can go into the empty studio and practice in the mirror there, however you want to do it. But for me, this is one of the reasons I love rope flow so much. This is how I get carry over to when I'm playing paddle or roller skating or, or whatever sport I want to be playing is when I learn to take my rope for a walk, simple as that, that's where we can get more from rope flow, way more that most of us are probably not even doing. Now, if you're completely new to rope flow and that's kind of like blown your mind of like, where do I even start? That's too much. Well, I got the perfect place for you. I'd recommend starting with the eight weeks to fluidity course. I released several years ago, thousands and thousands of people have gone through that course. There's about a thousand people going through it right now. If you join the app, you can communicate in a group chat with everyone that's going through it. Also, final note, final plug real quick. Just hear me out, guys. This is a big moment for me. This is big. I'm excited for this one. It's been years in the making, actually. So I wanted to do it right. I wanted to do it right. Merch is I I hate that word, not merch. Clothing capsule is finally here. I'll just give you a teaser. Spinal glow up. That is what the rope's doing for us, the spinal glow up. Coming very soon, next month. Stay tuned for that. Drop number one. The clothing I release in that drop will only be released in that moment and then not again. If you want to stay tuned for that, sign up to the mailing list. I'll link that down below. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching my video. I made a whole playlist on all the rope flow tips and drills that I've shared on this channel so far. You can see that playlist right here. Otherwise, maybe I'll see you in the next one. Godspeed.